Hi and welcome to another lesson in the physics video series. Today we're going to teach you how to use Excel to calculate columns of data and how to plot that data in separate graphs. Let's get started. It happens very often in a physics class that you must calculate tables of data and then plot that information and find the slopes and the equations of lines. We're going to start right now with a simple problem with a police car and a speeder. We're going to go over the mechanism for coding formulas and plotting. I'm going to be using equations 3 and 4 from the reference table. VF equals VO plus AT and DF equals VOT plus 1 half AT squared. And I'm going to be coding them into these columns here. So let me show you how that's going to work. Here in cell B18, where I just highlighted it, we want to put in the DF equals VOT plus 1 half AT squared formula using information that appears in a table above as well as information that appears in a column on the side. All equations have to be started with an equal sign in Excel. When you do that, you tell Excel a formula is coming and you will operate on cells. To put a formula in the cell, you have to first start with an equal sign. And here we have the distance formula, V0T plus 1 half AT squared, which is going to be coded into this cell. So the V0 we're going to be working with is in cell B10, and the time we're going to be working with is in A18. We want to be able to program this formula and then be able to grab the handle, drag it down so it fills in. You don't have to type in a formula 25 times. You only type it in once, and you're going to drag it to the bottom. So let's first code this formula. We know that V0T is the first element of this formula, and we want to deal with this V0. So we click it, and now it appears in the formula. And we want to multiply it by the time. To get this multiplication, you hit Shift and the number 8. That gives you the asterisk. And then you want to multiply by the time. So right now, we have this V0 times this time. Now this V0 needs to be frozen in place. To freeze a cell, we put a dollar sign in front of the letter and the number. By putting a dollar sign there, no matter how many times we copy that formula, it will continuously reference the frozen cell and multiply it by something else like we have here, V0T. Now we have to add the one half AT squared element of this formula. One half I'll just use as 0.5 and I will multiply that by the acceleration which is found in D10. D10 as you could see is in a lookup chart here so we're going to freeze the D10 cell so that the V0 and the A for this particular car will always be the same values in the formula and all that will change is the time. So then we will multiply the cell for time and we'll move over and we'll click that. In this case it's a little difficult to click it because it's being covered by the formula so we'll just retype A18 but it has to be squared so we put the shift 6 to get the carrot we put a 2. We have now created our first Excel formula for V0T plus 1 half AT squared. Hit enter and you get a value of 0. That's not very impressive but when I grab this handle, this green little box at the corner of the rectangle and pull it down you can see the values 2, 8, 18 all the way to 200 are this formula applied to each of the following cells. Let's take a look at the next cell. You can see that we had time in the A18 row, but now it's in the 19th row. And here we have the 20th row. So two seconds later, there's the 20th. And it goes all the way to the 28th row for 10 seconds of time. Now let's apply the same process to the speeder, which is a different vehicle, and he has his information in the 11th row. His speed is 20 meters per second, but he is not accelerating. I've already entered the formula into this cell so you can see it. It's still V0T plus 1 half AT squared, except now the V0 is referencing B11. You can see that the displacement formula for the second car draws its data from row 11, V0T plus 1 half AT squared, and its V0 is found in cell B11, and its acceleration is found in cell D11. I'm going to grab the handle and drag down all of this data and repeat the formula and you can see that the car which is moving at a constant speed that has no acceleration increases its distance by 20 meters for every second that it travels. We're going to plot this out soon but first we want to plot out the velocity formula VF equals VO plus AT for the police car and for the speeder. So let's take a look at what those equations are going to look like coded into Excel. 
we want to code VF equals VO plus AT into cell C18. So we start by selecting cell C18 and hitting an equal sign. And then it says V0 plus AT. The V0 of the police car happens to be cell B10, which equals a value of 0 because he's starting from rest. But because I want to continuously reference cell B10, I'm going to put the dollar signs in front of the B and the 10 to freeze that cell. Then I have to add acceleration times the time. The acceleration is found in cell D10. And since cell D10 is continuously referenced, we have to put the dollar signs there in front of the D and the 10 and multiply it times the time value. And this is the formula that we get. V0 plus A times T. And he has an initial speed of 0 at 0 seconds. I highlight the box and I grab the handle and I drag it all the way down. And there it is. The speeds of the car are increasing by 4 meters per second for every second. Since his acceleration is a rate of 4 meters per second squared, that means he's going to go up by 4. So you might say to me, well, why don't you just keep adding 4 or type this all in adding 4? Well, you can. It'll take a lot more time and effort to get calculations. But if I wanted to change his acceleration rate, let's say... I make the acceleration rate of the police officer 5 meters per second. Now everything changes and all of the values for the police officer change. His distances as well as his speeds. Let's go back to the original value. That's why you program formulas in Excel in the first place. You always link them to a reference cell. This way you can change the value of the reference cell and then the table will reflect the change immediately. And so will the graph that we're going to place right over here. Let's take a look at the formula for the speed of the other car, which is the speeder. In the same way that I coded the formula for the speed of the policeman, I will code the formula here, and you can see I already have it entered in. It's still V0 plus AT, but the V0 of the other car is in cell B11, and his acceleration happens to be 0, and it is in D11. Now I could change this from 0 to whatever I want and then just like before all the cells solutions are based on this reference and they would change likewise. So let's copy this formula, fill down all the way to the bottom. We see because he has no acceleration he doesn't change his speed. But what if I decided he's going to try to outrun that police officer and he's going to accelerate at 2 meters per second. I change the value here in the cell for acceleration and then I press enter you now have a new chart developed based on this new acceleration let's go back to the original let's use the space over here to put two graphs a DT graph and a VT graph as well as determining their equations and slopes so I know that the time always goes on the x-axis and I want to compare the distance traveled between the policeman and the speeder. So how did I just select those? Well, let me show you. I click and hold the mouse and drag. But then I can hit the button for control. I hold it down and I click the zero, and hold and drag to 200. And then I release my finger from the mouse, click the next value in the top of the column which is D2 all the way down and I hold the mouse click with the left finger and I hold the control button at the same time. So I've just multi-selected three columns. Now that I've multi-selected three columns, let's graph them. Go to the home ribbon, hit insert and then go all the way over to charts. And I like to pick this scatter chart here because it gives me the freedom to apply other lines and graphs and information to it. So now that I have graphed two columns of information on one axis, first thing I want to do is change the title. I double click it and I change the name and I will call it D versus T. Now how do I get a line and an equation for the orange series and the blue series? Well let's show you that right now. Notice that when I hover over any of these orange dots, it gives me information. It tells me the series name, which is series 2. It tells me the point and gives me 5, 1. It tells me information. But I also would like to see this as a line. So I right-click any of these points. And when I do, I go to Add Trend Line. 
and adding trend line brings up the format trend line window here on the right side. And since this is a straight line and it is set to linear automatically, I want to see the equation on the chart. Now I could set the intercept to zero if it didn't already start at zero. But once I do this, I now have the equation of this line. It is graphed. I'm also going to rename this equation for convenience. On the y-axis, we're really using D. This is a distance time graph. On the x-axis, we have T for time. So this really is an equation that is D equals 20 T. And the 20 is the V0, which is 20 meters per second for the orange car. Now the next procedure is to make a curve that fits this blue set of data. So I'm going to pick any of these points and right click the data. Then I go to the add trend line feature. And when I do, notice that it's set automatically to a line. But this line, best fit line, does not fit this blue series at all. It's a parabola. And a parabola is a polynomial shape, and that's of the order of two. And notice when I click this, it automatically fits it and snaps to the points. I will set the intercept to zero, but I will make sure I turn on the equation. Now when I turn on the equation, I'm going to alter this equation slightly so it makes more sense to the context of our problem. So here I have the new form of the equation, d equals 2t squared. And we know that the equation is 1 half a t squared so that the value in front of this t happens to be half of the actual acceleration one half a is the number that appears in front of the t squared so this really shows us we have a four meter per second squared acceleration so based on this data we have created the first of the two graphs dt now let's create a vt graph in the same way that we selected three columns of data in the last graph we're going to select three columns of data for this graph we're going to select the time, 0 to 10 seconds. Then we're going to hold down the shift button and select all of the V1 and all of the V2 columns. We now have three sets of data we can graph exactly the same way we did in the last graph. So how do we graph that? Well, we go to Insert, Chart, Scatter. And there they are. The graph shows up in its raw form with just generic title and data series, blue and orange. So let's modify this. We'll change the title and we're going to add best fit lines as well as equations. Next, pick the other point. Right click it, add trend line, still is linear, scroll down to display equation. But do not set the intercept to zero because this intercept is not zero. It's actually 20. Let's take a look at what would happen if you did set the intercept to zero. I set the intercept to zero. You force the computer to make a slope line through these points that has to start through zero. And notice it changes the equation, but it doesn't even match any of the points. So we're going to uncheck select intercept and it corrects itself and gives you the right equation and the correct best fit line. The next step is to change the equations on your graph so that V is represented as Y and T is represented as X in both equations if there is an X. In case you forgot, I'll show you how to change this equation. And that's how easy it is to change, edit the equation. So like before, we took three columns of data, time and two speeds and we plotted them here on this graph. And in closing, now you can see that we have this data table, which has inside of it its own built-in formulas based on this reference row and this reference row. And then this data was compiled and graphed in a DT and VT graph respectively. The blue data series is the policeman and the orange data series is the speeder. And they go right back to these reference cells. If I was to change anything in the reference cells, let's say that the policeman accelerated more quickly than four. It was six meters per second. As soon as I change that, watch what's going to happen to the graphs. The graphs instantly update to match the new data in the table which updated, and you could see that the intersection point was a lot sooner than it was when he had a slower acceleration. But let's say, oh, I made a mistake, or I didn't really want to change that data. I go back, 
end, the graphs respond and they go back to the original positions that all the plot points were in. There's a lot of graphing in the physics class and Excel is a very powerful tool to help you manage a lot of data and to produce graphical representations and charts very quickly. I hope you enjoyed this lesson. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.